We welcome the digipreneur, Karen Rose. He joins me on, well, the Zoom line to get the ball rolling on this uh, Tuesday morning. Karen, great to see you. Good morning. Jason, always a pleasure talking to you, man. How, I hope everything is going well with you. All is well, my friend. And listen, I look forward because today we're going to talk about building your digital presence. But before we get into that, of course, yesterday would have been the budget. Anything at all within the realm of technology that piqued your interest with some of what the finance minister said yesterday? You know what? I'm going to have to get back to you on that next week because I was so busy yesterday, I didn't even myself get a chance to sit down and see what um, was talked about in the budget for with respect to technology. But I'm going to be doing that this week, and I will give you some updates next week on my thoughts on it. For sure, definitely. I look forward because I know you always keep your eyes on the prize and you look towards, you know, what's trending and, and best practices internationally that we could apply to Trinidad. I'll tell you this, Karen, the Guardian actually today, when you get a copy of a Guardian, there's a full yeah. breakdown inside today's Guardian. So by all means, uh, get your copy later on for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Karen, how can I build and how can we build that presence, that digital presence? And, and what is what is that? Probably you could just elaborate as to what that is first and then tell us how we can build it. So your digital presence pretty much uh, comprises of all of your interactions and engagements that happen online um, for you as your brand. Now, we everybody should be thinking about building their, their personal brand, being intentional about the information that they're putting online, how they're showing up online, whether it be you know, what social media platforms you are using, the conversations you are engaging with and creating. Um, because everything that we do has an online component to it, right? So in building your online presence and building your and building your brand, you want to be thinking about how do I want to be known? What are some of the things and activities that I need to participate that can show my expertise online? Okay, understood. Let me ask you though, um, it's better that you create a narrative or can you hire someone to create that narrative? To, to create, because again, online, remember, you could, you could sell any dreamer. I could literally sell that I'm the hottest man in Trinidad and Tobago and get somebody to curate it, get the right pictures, have me there, you know, pose up, lighten. What's the best approach in that regard? So, you know what? Everything, when it comes to your personal brand, your personal brand really starts with self-awareness and authenticity. It's really easy to see who knows their stuff from who doesn't. And your personal brand should always be rooted in your expertise, your values, your skill sets, your interests. Because if you are building your personal brand, chances are you're looking to one, either uh, you have a business and you're looking to gain business, you're looking to get clients, or two, you have a personal brand and you are an employee and you are looking to rise to the ranks within the corporate ladder, or maybe you're looking to attract opportunities for companies around the world. So you want to start with your expertise and your skill sets and using that as a basis in building your personal brand. Because if you are just jumping online and you're saying, you're, you're making up who you are and it's not rooted in anything, people can see that. But then when somebody does shine a light on you and they realize, wait a minute, this person isn't who they say, because you might fool some people, you might get the opportunities, but then when they put you in that position, when you might get the job because you fool somebody, can you actually execute? That's not the best way to go about it. But for people who actually have a skill set, expertise, and they're crafting the personal brand, they're, um, they're, create, they're crafting that message online, and it's authentic, and they are put in the right positions at the right time with the right people, they're going to shine. Yeah, well said, because, I mean, many over the years uh, use the whole concept of faking it to make it, but eventually you get figured out. And especially online, um, you know, it's probably easier via back in the day a music video or you could have present something on TV, but online because it's such a demand for content and the turnover is quite fast, eventually I guess you can get figured out. But what I want to do Yes. is ask if there is a personal attack to your brand, if there is a campaign to attack your brand or attack your, your essence, your, your authenticity, as it were. Uh, how, how, how do we navigate that storm? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, on a, on a regular, base, on a regular basis, uh, debate is always going to be good. Steel sharpens steel. So how, um, like me, my expertise, my skill sets, um, the things that I've gone through, I would share those things online. P 
people are going to have other experiences that might go against what I have. And as long as we can have good discourse um, online, have that discourse. There are people that challenge me all the time about how I would approach digital marketing, uh, building a brand, e-commerce. People challenge me all the time. But as long as we can have that discourse, I would gladly have that discourse publicly once it is respectful. So I don't run away from anybody who has a who has a different uh, point of view or who disagrees with me. Once it's respectful, I actively engage. Now, if somebody is trying to uh, besmirch your besmirch your name, um, at that point, depending on depending on how bad it is, you can always look at one reporting some of the content that you're seeing online if it is untrue or again they are trying to besmirch your name but then you always have the legal aspects that you can go and venture if people are really um i, I believe that what, what is a legal term is it is it, it's libel yeah libel. you know yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah you yeah. can always go down you can always go down that route but again uh, generally i don't run away from any discourse um once it's part once it, it it's it's respectful i would engage with anybody who has a difference of opinion on, online so let me ask you now, should a business or even a personality engage in the experts? Bring someone on your team, because again, when you're telling that story and creating a narrative, everything from the right photographer, the right pictures, the right frame, lighting, even the caption, that's an art. Many don't even realize to put a caption takes a particular skill set. You want to be able to say this much with that amount of, you know, least amount of words and make it smart, make it engaging. Uh, what's your advice okay. in that regard? Honestly, I would take it a step further and, and I would simplify it. Grab your phone and whatever the topic is within your industry, hot topics, um, your insights, um, questions that people ask you, grab your phone and create content. Turn your video on, talk to your camera, talk about the pain points that are happening within your industry. There is no better way to build your brand and build your personal brand and showcase your expertise than you just grabbing your phone and talking to those pain points that are happening within your industry. If you're somebody who doesn't really like the video camera, cool, you don't have to write, you don't have to do a video. You can also write an article, you can write a blog, have a website, put all of your insights in the blog. If you want to podcast, I podcast all the time, buy a microphone, Get your, get your microphone connected to your, com connected to your computer and podcast. To me, sharing industry insights, your expertise, your experiences goes way further down the line than the surface level stuff of just having the right photos to post online with a long caption because that is, it's, it's surface level. If you really want to build your brand, showcase your expertise by creating content. Yeah, get a little more personal with it. Yeah, and again, your experiences are your experiences, and you're going to be able to add to the conversations. Everybody is looking. When they're going online, people want information. They want to be educated. They want to be entertained as well. If you can combine those two, chances are you're going to start to build a very big following if you're able to mesh those two things together. So don't just settle for the pretty pictures, the, the fancy lights, the fancy, uh, the fancy photography, because at the end of the day, that's cool, but use those things very sparingly because they don't really add much. Use your experience, create content, and talk about the topics in your industry that can showcase your expertise. Okay, so you're building your brand, the ultimate scenario, you're building it, you take up the phone, you're giving your personal touch, people feeling your personality, they're feeling what you're bringing to the table. You're seeing massive traction, lots of numbers, lots of eyeballs. How does one now monetize that kind of attention? Great. So the, you can monetize in, in a multitude of ways. So monetization as an employee looks like uh, negotiation power when a company is trying to hire you. Now, if you're bringing something to the table and you have a bigger name, there is more wiggle room to negotiate. You can also start to attract better job opportunities if you are somebody who is not looking to build a business, but you're an employee. When it comes to you being a, a business and you want to monetize, if you have products, you're able to sell products because now you have a following, but you're not just getting a superficial following. We talked about influencer marketing last week, and we know there's a lot of people that showcase assets, and there's, there's the numbers, but they don't really have influence. But if you're showcasing your expertise, your knowledge in the industry, people genuinely want to learn from, about the products that you recommend, 
your solutions that you're offering. So if you have a product, you're able to sell it. If you provide a service, you're able to sell it. If you're doing something like affiliate marketing, where you're marketing other people's products. So for example, um, people always ask me, how did you learn so much about digital marketing and e-commerce? What books do you read? I can send them my affiliate link from Amazon with the links to the products that I would have recommend. And when they buy it, I would make a commission off of that. You can also monetize by creating content and getting partnerships. So brands might reach out to you, other companies will reach out to you to collaborate and they would pay you to create content with them. That's, so that's like, just a couple of ways. That's like with the unboxing videos. I love to, to take in those unboxing videos where somebody will get a product, literally cut the box open and it, you know, you're, and they're walking you through, this is the charger, this is whatever. And, and they have so much information on the product and sometimes they get some of these products free just for them to so unbox. Sometimes they get the products free, and a lot of times they get paid to do it. And uh, even, let's, let's take it a step beyond unboxing. There's many times we're in a situation where we don't know how to do something, and we jump on YouTube to learn the answer. So you might be thinking about, you have something to do with Microsoft Excel. You don't know how to do it, you go on YouTube and learn. Monetization looks like the person that made those boring Excel videos that's teaching you how to do your job, he is monetized because he's getting paid through the views on YouTube. He is now getting a check creating those Excel videos. Microsoft could also reach out to him in partnership to come and teach Excel classes if they so figure to do that. So that's just a couple of ways that you could monetize as well. Is it sustainable though, Karen? I mean, yes, we're talking monetize, but what are the actual figures? Do people actually live? Are you able to pay your mortgage, rent, eat, travel, live a comfortable life off of doing this? Yes, absolutely. Because you know what? Even on the smaller scale, right? If a company is willing to work with you and you're able to not just, not just focus on uh, brand partnerships and sponsorships, you wanna start thinking about your income as an ecosystem. So if you can make some money, maybe you make a $3,000, we're talking TT, maybe you make a $3,000 um, in partnerships, but then you're also selling your products. You also probably have a service. Because you're creating content and building a following, more people trust you, more people are reaching out to get your service. That's money coming in as well. Add in something like an affiliate marketing where you earn a couple of hundred dollars US a month in doing that. By the time you have your ecosystem of revenue, you realize, wait a minute, I just made $30,000 and it didn't all come from one source. It came from having an ecosystem for your revenue. The key really is for people in Trinidad and Tobago to learn how do I build that ecosystem for your revenue what goes into it? What do I need to do? And it really does start with building that personal brand. I'll give you the closing remarks, as always, Karen, in terms of today's very important and impactful topic, building your digital presence. Closing remarks. Yeah. Building your presence has never been more important than ever before because guess what? The majority of our interactions are happening online and the majority of our transactions are happening online. When clients or customers are looking for information because they have a problem or maybe they want to achieve a desire, so they jump on Google and they search, hey, my lower back is hurting me. Is your business going to be the one that pops up providing the information, which then leads to a call about a booking for your service, or maybe they're adding to cart your products and you're making sales? You need to start thinking about how do we build that personal brand so that when people have that problem, your business is showing up at the right time, at the right, with the right information for the right customers. Another successful and fantastic episode of the Digipreneur with the Digipreneur himself, Karen Rose. Have a great week. We'll talk soon, buddy. You too. See you next week. Yes, man. And of course, get the get the Guardian. You'll get the full breakdown with all the budget details. Now, before we bring Hanif Benjamin on set after the break. He's coming in right after the break. Some people are not satisfied with the finance minister's $3 minimum wage increase. Now, they told CNC3 News that this is not enough to offset the rise in the cost of living. But there are others who welcome the announcement. Here's uh, some of what the people on the ground, Trinidad and Tobago, had to say. With the increase in minimum wage by three dollars, 
-hmm. Increase is good, but it's not really making a difference because the cost of living is so high in order for it to be effective. I believe that it would need to be increased a lot more than at least uh, around 30 to the five dollars an hour. Yes, it's a good thing. And at the same time, we, an increase of three dollars is not much. As we know, the raise light bill, one, grocery prices raise. So it didn't really make a difference. Yes, it's a good, and yes, it, it may seem like it's something, but really and truly, just as they give you, they're taking it back from you. So it don't really make a difference. I think that that's a, a good thing. At least um, it, it, it was considered. It was a um, recommendation. The recommendation that was given would have been $25, but at least it was considered. So it has gone up, and I think that it should at least help some persons in different spheres of life. It, it could have been a little more. At least right now with food prices and everything, you know, it could have been high. Well, I assume those who are in that bracket would be happy, but unfortunately things are usually offset by the overall cost of living. So even though it, there's an increase for $3, the $3 for the minimum wage, we can expect an increase in terms of groceries, in terms of gas, otherwise, and it, it, it doesn't really, um, it doesn't really offset too well. It's quite unbalanced, so unfortunately we'll still be in the same position that we were in before the $3 increase. I feel very happy because the girls can afford to pay their bills, go to the groceries, a brighter future. So many different things they could do with this increase. Hey, thank you so much, San Fernando. You know, again, getting that real-time, real-from-the-heart perspective from Trinidad and Tobago. We give thanks. Up next, we touch base with Hanif Benjamin. We are dealing with some of the social initiatives put forward by the finance minister inside the 2023-24 budget. Hanif joins me on set live after the break. <laughs> 